Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. There are a bunch of great libraries on whatever platform you're using to add resilience and fault tolerance to your application or services. They make things like adding timeouts, circuit breakers, retries, they make adding them a breeze. But what should you use in what situation? Well, here are some things to consider because not all faults should be handled the same way. So I'm talking about fault tolerance, I'm talking about handling transient failures or transient faults. And these are really things that are unpredictable. This could be because of a network issue. It could be because of the service that you're actually calling is unavailable. Maybe there's latency issues, but these things are generally not happening all that often. But when they do happen, how do you handle them? So the first thing I'm gonna bring up is what would the business say? If you brought to the business saying, there's this part of the process and this may potentially occur, there may be this fault that's a transient issue, how do we wanna handle it? Does it impact the workflow? That's kind of a business decision, not necessarily, oh, I'm just going to add a retry to this and hope for the best. So the first part of all of this is really, what does the business have to say? What is the impact to the workflow and what do they think should happen? But because we're developers and we like technical things, I'm going to jump to that and then I'll tail back into this mixing with the business. So I'm going to be using the example of messaging. So I have a message broker and this could be an event or a command, whatever the case may be. If you're using something request response RPC, like HTTP, um, you can probably translate this. But let's say we have our message broker and it has a consumer. It sends that message to the consumer and our consumer has to call some external service. This could be a database. It could be some other service that we're interacting with. And this is going to be something that's a uh, request response. So we go to make that request, but there's a failure. It could be a network failure. It could be that the external service maybe threw us a 500 error or there was some timeout issue and it took too long just by our default timeout. And what we're immediately gonna do is once that failure occurs, we're just gonna retry immediately. And in most transient issues, this just solves the problem. We make the other call, we get a response back. It's great, nothing to worry about here. So maybe we added retries and that was solving our problem with any transient issues they were having. And then we started noticing that our retries or immediate retries weren't actually working. So then we started implementing an exponential back off, which is really just, we go back to our scenario here. We have our message broker sending to our consumer. When our consumer calls that external service, it's not up. We do our immediate retry and it's still not working. So what we do at this point is wait a period of time. We wait that period of time. Nope, still not up. Now we're going to wait even longer to try to make that call and hopefully it succeeds. We may have 10 retries, each spaced out even more and more. So here's where I jump back to, what would the business do? Because this could be a business uh, decision or have some business impact about maybe we have some SLA about the total length of time it takes for a consumer to process a message. If we're adding that much latency with retries to our external service, do we really just want to be doing these retries? Do we want to be doing them at all? So it really comes back to you when you're processing a message and an external service is unavailable, maybe just immediate retry is all you need. If that fails, is it a problem? Maybe it's not a problem. So I think as developers, we often think that everything needs to succeed and everything needs to be successful, but it doesn't in context matters. And that's why you need to ask the business. For example, if you're processing messages and let's say you have something that's recurring and something that happens every five minutes, for example, and when you consume that message, let's say you update the state in the database. Well, if there was a transient issue and you had some exponential back off on that, that say added a total latency of two minutes to process and consume that message. And at the end of it, it still wasn't working. Well, if you have a rate of that recurring message coming in at every five minutes, well, in three minutes after that all went and happened and, and didn't work, in three minutes, you're just gonna try again. So do you really need to add that two minutes of latency of processing that job when you're about to do it again in five minutes? Maybe you should just fail quickly and allow that consumer to process another message. But maybe processing that message was really important to workflow. So we can't just abandon everything entirely. But what we can do with that in messaging is a dead letter queue. So if we have our message broker, we have our consumer, and our external service is not unavailable, and we have our exponential back off and immediate retry. So we immediately retry, we maybe did our exponential back off, and this took like two minutes total. 
Well, at this point, if it's still not working and we don't want to hang, hold up this consumer because it's not able to process any other messages, what we do now is just send that message to the dead letter queue and we can deal with it separate, separately. We can report on this and we don't actually lose that message. We could actually try to reprocess it later once we know that that external service is back online and available. So the problem with adding exponential backoffs is the total latency it adds to your consumer because when your consumer is processing message, it's not processing any other messages. So if we have our message broker and it sent um, the message to the consumer and our external service isn't available, what we can do then is once we sent it to the dead letter queue, instead of having the next message go to the consumer and that same process go over again, where now it's gonna potentially take a long time, let's say it takes two minutes for our exponential backup to end up failing to go to the dead letter queue, well, that means that our consumer is not processing any other messages at this time. We could be really backing up the work that our consumers need to do. So instead, what we can do is add a circuit breaker so that when our consumer gets that message that needs to interact with that external service, it's not even going to do it. It's just going to immediately move that to a dead letter queue. And after a period of time that we set, once we get a message again, we can interact with the external service again to see if it's available. If it isn't, back to the dead letter queue. If it is, then all uh, new messages that we process, we'll try to use that external service. So if you watch my video on competing consumers, you know that if you wanna process more work, you're not gonna have one consumer, you're gonna have many consumers processing messages concurrently. And if they're processing messages concurrently, that means that when they both get the message and they both need to interact with that external service, the first one's gonna fail, it's gonna to have to go through its life cycle of retrying and exponentially backing off. That means that we have two consumers now that are potentially waiting a really long time before they fail and end up going to the dead letter queue. So at this point, you don't want a circuit breaker individually, you could, but you may want a distributed circuit breaker to let the first consumer know that this occurs to let the other consumers know, no, don't even bother trying the external service. It's not up right now. You're just wasting your time. So from a technical point of view, the thing I would think about when adding anything, and I, I'm illustrating in this particular video, the one example, but this goes many different ways, is you are trying to add resiliency and fault tolerance, and you're actually gonna make it worse and cause cascading failures. So my example to illustrate this is you're gonna be backing up your queue, potentially, if you're adding something like an exponential back off and be aware that you're doing it. It may not be that big of a deal for a message that doesn't have a high volume, but if it has a high volume and you're adding an exponential back off that say takes two minutes to fail, well, your consumer's doing nothing else but trying that one message, process that one message for two minutes. If it normally only takes 10 milliseconds to process that message and all of a sudden it's taking two minutes, you can be guaranteed that your queue or your uh, topic is gonna to be backed up and you're not gonna be processing messages and your throughput is gonna go way, way down. So sometimes the right answer is just failing fast. You don't need retries. You want, maybe wanna add timeouts so your external service isn't taking up a long time. Maybe that is a really low timeout, but fail fast. Maybe that is actually the answer rather than retrying or having a fallback or a failover or even moving a message to a dead letter queue. Again, I think that comes down to, at the very beginning, what does the business say? Find out from the business if, if a particular message or something you're processing is a part of a workflow, you've defined this with a business of what it actually is, what's the result if you can't process that message? I don't think that's a technical decision in most circumstances, it's probably a business decision. Get together with the business and figure out what the right answer is. Maybe it's fail fast and move it to a dead letter queue. Maybe it's absolutely retry and exponential back off. Maybe it's fail over or maybe it's fall back to some value that we know we have. But again, I don't think these are just technical decisions that you need to be making. As I always say, context is king. You need to be looking at each individual situation to decide how you wanna handle failures. There is no just global solution that you're gonna have for your entire application or service. It's gonna be per particular place that you need to add resiliency or fault tolerance. I'm also gonna be posting a video soon about messaging libraries and the value that it brings because I think this is directly related about how you wanna handle fault tolerance, especially in messaging and the value that they bring in messaging libraries as opposed to using a transport directly, the SDK for a transport, say for example, RabbitMQ. So if you're into that topic, make sure to subscribe. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.